How do you deal with creating a server to be as your code interpreter that is empowering your language model to run and execute some codes? Well, maybe you don't need to. Now with open source solution called E2B Code Interpreter, you can connect that as a tool to your language model. That means your agent will be able to execute codes like Python codes without running them your local machine. With just one line of code, you will be connected to an isolated server as your code interpreter to execute any codes generated by your language model based agent, get the response back and continue dynamically your iteration through your code powered agent. Then let's go. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, let's get into E2B or better to say an open source solution for interpreting codes for AI apps. So let's make it simple and dig into quickly what we're going to achieve and what is the purpose of using this. Certainly you have tried maybe to develop your agentic frameworks using Gen AI that at some point you need to have your language model to generate a code and then you need to run that code to get the response back to language model and even continue the flow of your agent with having a server to execute the codes generated by language model. And this is what E2B is doing for you. They are providing an infrastructure easy to set up to run your code that is developed by Gen AI and get the response back to your LLM to continue the conversation chat but or any type of agent that you're developing that needs a, a server like a Pythonic environment for example to run your code so in a nutshell if I go back to their main documentation it's an open source infrastructure that allow you run your AI generated code in a secure isolated sandbox so you can think about E2B as sort of a small isolated virtual machine which is on cloud that is getting quickly started for you in around 150 milliseconds. So this is extremely good for especially POCs or when you're in a dev or a staging environment, you want to have some sort of application that quickly you need to take the code from LLM, push it to a server to run the code, get the response back, continue your LLM application, again to generate the codes and again execute them, but you don't need to or you don't want to deal with how can I get the code from LLM, execute it somewhere and get the response back. So this is actually a very quick win for you as you can see in Python you can just with pip install e2b code interpreter. Now you have a, a tool that you can offload your code from LLM to the server. So to show you how it works, here is my quick collab example that as I said I installed this e2b I also install Anthropic because I want to use Anthropic as my language model, but you can use OpenAI, any of them, it doesn't matter really. And of course, if you want to utilize some environment variables, you can install this too. So here I ran this code and after that, before recording this video, I remove my keys. So you need to have your language model key and also E2B key. So how did I get that in E2B when you click on dashboard? You will log in with your Gmail or however you want to authenticate and it will give you the key and you have enough credit, free credits actually, to start and work with. So what I'm going to do here, I have a data set generated, which is movies data set. Let me show you actually what it is. So this data set includes some fake examples that are generated by language model actually, that contains people review about specific names, what was the title of the name, the, the overview, some uh, scores about how people voted about that actually specific movie, so on and so forth, world average, world count, title, release date, so on and so forth. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take, I, I wanna create an agent that is actually enabled to load this data, check out this data and create some visualized charts out of it. And as you can see for doing so, I need to run a Python code. And of course my language model gonna create that Python code. But where do I need to execute that? I'm not going to manually copy and paste the code. Well, you can either maybe specify several local on your machine, but maybe with just E2B, you can offload it there. 
as simple as how I'm going to show you. So after importing sandbox from E2B code interpreter, you can see I'm actually calling that. And obviously, because the code is going to be executed there, so the code needs to access to my data set. So with this, I am writing the file to the server. You can also write and download the file from this E2B server. And here in this function, I'm running the generated code by LLM. So I'm calling my sandbox from E2B, which is that isolated virtual machine, to run the code. And the code is going to be retrieved from my AI agent here, Anthropic Model, which is the input of this function. And if there are some errors, I will get them. If not, because the answer of my agent is going to be a chart, so I'm, I'm going through the results that I'm getting from this sandbox, looking for a specific PH-based results to have them written back to my machine here. All right. So this is my prompt. This is assume that this is your system message or prompt to your agent. Let's say I want to define an agent, which is a movie analyst. And I'm saying that you're going to be access to this type of specific files with these formats. And I want to understand these votes average. So give me some sort of charts or a Python code and analyze it and give me the charts back as a response so I can take a look. Obviously, there's going to be a Python code and I need to execute it somewhere. So I'm calling my language model, which is Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. Again, you can use any language model you want. You can even use local languages, language models if you want to. And given that Anthropic has something called tool calling, so I'm going to specify that there is a tool that runs Python code. So this will enforce language model to give me just a code back. back without extra explanation or something. So the output of my language model is going to be just code, so I can push it to E2B, that virtual machine. This is actually what I'm going to do. So after getting the response back from language model, as you can see, I am sending that code uh, to this function, which this function is going to call, as you remember, the sandbox from E2B, open source language uh, sorry, library, and run the code. The code is generated by a language model. And that's it. I just ran it before this uh, recording this video. It took me 80 seconds to save the time. I'm going to show you the results. You can see that it is actually generating a code, a Python code, to actually get the data, do some analysis based on what I asked, and then visualize that and save the response back. This is a Python code, but none of them got executed on my machine. It actually got executed to a virtual machine that E2B is actually providing to me, which is a sandbox. And it was fairly fast. So I ran this and I got the response back because I, I'm using this code to save the results back out of that sandbox. Here it is. My result for us executed. And if I click on it, you'll see that it beautifully generated the chart of average voter score by Rizier. Again, I got this result of the code without running that code on my virtual machine. We're just running this code interpreter on backend that is um, running my code and get the response back. So given that now we know what it is and what's the purpose value of that, I want to give you some more information, potentially some questions that you have in mind about this, how secure it is, what configurations I have about it. So first thing, when you start the sandbox, it is stay alive for five minutes by default. But you can change that with the timeout setting. The second thing is all these sandboxes, they have access to the internet. And you can also get their public URL as well. So we're just running this code. It will retrieve you the public URL of that sandbox. There are some customizations you can do. For example, the amount of CPU or, or RAM, you can specify that under sandbox templates. You can actually install specific packages if you want to have that sandbox being able to run a specific code or a specific uh, packages. You can have that uh, customized for you. And as we discussed, the sandbox, they have read and write capabilities. So you can load, upload your data there to get the code interpreter on your, your code on the top of your data and also get the data back to the machine that your agent is actually getting uh, executed and I'm calling your language model. So that was a quick overview of E2B, but certainly you can create much more sophisticated examples. To give you one example that they created using this package is this AI powered code data analyst. So you can go through this open source repo, but good news is that they have already executed this sample and it is running live right now. So I can give it a try. So it is using Llama 405 billion parameters as choice of language model and I can just upload let me 
I think this is just an example having some of that on logs, but let's see what it is. So I would say visualize my data. A very naive and sort of vague question because I don't even remember what was this CSV file is. But anyways, as you can see, it is generating the Python code. And I'm assuming the Python code should get executed, sort of, to get me the response back. And I believe it is. There you go. Oh, that was actually stock price. Interesting. I had a stock price, I think, sample data set. I didn't know even what it is. So as you can see, it ran the code for me, but the code was executed in the N2P virtual machine. Nothing on my local or nothing on this application. And good news, they will give you also the chart interactive as well. So you can get this interactive response back to add it to your front end application if you want to have some interactive charts as well. All right, so that was a quick overview of what is E2B and how you can quickly leverage it for some agents that you're creating that you need to execute some Python codes at some point. And I think this is a great way to start. Obviously, this is evolving, it's open source. And you can give it a try and let me know what you think in comment section. And if you like the video, I would be very thankful if you click on like icon. Thank you so much.